Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the role of proprioception in motor control. Uh, so proprioception is the perception of limb, body, and head movement, and the force and effort associated with muscle contraction. Okay, so proprioception is our sense of where we are in space, both in you know relation to our environment that the body is in, but also um, the relationship between movement of one limb or um, the relationship between different limbs and the movement of your body and your head. And then proprioception also gives us information about the force that's being generated by muscles and transmitted through tendons and forces that are being applied externally to the body. Um, so proprioception is critical to the coordination of most movements. Um, now, when we say most movements, we mean movements where there is time for there to be sensory feedback that goes from the periphery back to the control center, so the central nervous system, and then to send corrections back out again to coordinate that movement. So any movement where there is that time, then proprioception is critical. It's critical feedback that we use to help us kind of correct those movement patterns and make corrections as we're engaging in that movement. Um, in a future video, we'll talk about closed loop and open loop systems. And that's where we get into the difference between using feedback and not using feedback. Uh, movement accuracy is um, especially affected if proprioception is missing. So if we don't have accurate proprioceptive uh, data coming up, for lack of a better word, um, then our accuracy of our movement is going to suffer. Uh, it appears to be due to lack of kinematic and kinetic feedback. So kinematic feedback like um, velocity and acceleration and kinetic feedback like feedback about forces that are being applied by muscles or gravity or other places. Um, so no feedback about limb displacement, which interferes with spatial position corrections to achieve accuracy. Um, so again, when we are engaging in some kind of movement, um, we are sending proprioceptive feedback, the, the body is sending proprioceptive feedback back to the control center, and we use that feedback to make adjustments to the movement plan to be more accurate in our movement. Um, so if we're not getting that proprioceptive feedback about our limb displacement or where we are in space, then we're going to be less accurate in our spatial position. Um, no feedback about limb velocity and force, which are other aspects of proprioception, um, that interferes with our movement distance accuracy. So if we are having difficulty estimating kind of how quickly the limb is moving and with how much force, um, then we're going to have a hard time estimating when we'll arrive at the target. So movement distance accuracy is going to suffer. Uh, so in a normal healthy system with proprioception intact, corrections are made if the movement takes a sufficiently long time to allow for that feedback and correction to take place. Um, if the movement is so fast um, that there isn't time for proprioception or the proprioceptive data to make it to the control center to allow for changes, then proprioception is less critical. And again, there we're discussing the difference between closed loop and open looped systems, uh, which we'll talk about in detail in a future video. Uh, so onset of motor commands is also affected by proprioceptive feedback. Uh, so the timing of the onset of the motor commands is affected. Um, and so essentially the timing of the onset is slower and more variable. So less consistent from trial to trial and the onset of the, the command happens at a more slow rate. Um, also compensations to perturbations are also slower and more variable, meaning that if there's a disturbance in the movement, so like um, let's say I send a motor command that I'm just gonna walk across the ground, a perturbation could be like I step on a patch of ice that I didn't expect, I didn't know it was there. So that would be some kind of disruption in my motor pattern or in my movement that I'm trying to execute. And um, we use proprioceptive feedback to detect that perturbation and detect what is different about 
uh, this movement from what we planned. And then we're able to send the, the feedback or the feedback goes to the control center and we change, we update the motor plan. And that goes back out to the effectors, meaning the muscles in this case. Um, and so then we're able to compensate for that so that we don't fall and we're able to still successfully uh, execute the movement. Um, so without proprioceptive feedback, we're not really able to compensate for perturbations as well. So those compensations happen more slowly and less predictably. Um, so in a case like stepping on a patch of ice, the compensation might ha happen slowly enough that it's not in time to keep us from falling. So we might fall in that situation, not be able to execute the movement accurately. Um, so coordination control is also ser seriously affected by lack of proprioceptive feedback. Um, posture, for one thing, is affected by a long list of uh, variables. Um, and that includes proprioceptive feedback. Uh, so posture is affected by vision, the musculoskeletal system, the vestibular system, the cerebellum, basal ganglia, cognitive processes, tactile sensory system, and proprioception. So if we have dysfunction in any of those things on this list, that is likely going to have an effect on posture. Uh, some of those things will affect posture more than others, and they'll have different types of effects on posture. Um, proprioception, if it's altered, um, tends to cause more postural sway. Um, so postural sway is just kind of the normal, natural bit of movement that we have just in normal posture. Um, but we don't want it to be extreme and we don't, we don't want to exacerbate postural sway. We don't want it to be more than normal or no, more than what it naturally is. Um, so altered proprioception leads to increased postural sway. Uh, and it can also cause other changes and abnormalities in our postural control. Um, so lack of proprioception also will cause issues in spatial temporal coupling between limbs and segments. So in a lot of movements, we need to have coupling between limbs and segments, meaning that um, different limbs and segments are coupled, they're moving in the same um, spatial patterns or their relationship and their movement matters in terms of timing and how that happens. So spatial temporal coupling. Um, so the, the coordination or organization of the movement of the limbs and segments in terms of space and time. Um, so for a lot of movements, that coupling is really critical to successful execution of that movement. So uh, proprioceptive feedback is necessary when we are coordinating multiple joints in a limb. So like if I'm reaching for something on a shelf, we need to coordinate the movement of the shoulder, elbow, and wrist all together to be able to reach accurately and, and reach the target. Um, it's also important for coordination of, of the arms for bimanual coordination tasks. So if we're trying to coordinate both hands to execute a movement together, um, it's really critical for that. And then coordination of limbs uh, for consistency and repetitive movements like gait. So without proprioceptive feedback, we're gonna have a really difficult time coordinating arms and legs to achieve a normal gait pattern um, without obvious um, lack of coordination. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.